Today, we look at the Saramonic SR-VR-M1 XLR audio recorder. I really like this little recorder as it has all the right stuff. It is affordable. It is small so I can carry it in my gadget bag. It has long battery life which makes it very reliable and it's easy to use. It is very well made out of metal with a large clear display. Recorders like this have the advantage over wireless units. No dropouts or interference for reliable audio. There are many uses for this kind of recording. On a boom pole. On a mic mounted on a camera. A reporter style mic with a recorder for interviews. Or just a plain recorder for double system sound. This is Alan Halfhill for personal view. I recently used this recorder on a shoot because I wanted to do voiceover audio. Rather than use my camera, I plugged my microphone into the Saramonic SR-VR-M1. In the past, I have used my camera, but then I would have to edit out the video. Recording with a little recorder like this for voice is simpler and less time consuming. The really cool thing about this recorder is that it has phantom power so I could use my condenser microphone. I use my Audio-Technica U873R hypercardinoid microphone, which is great for recording indoors in small rooms because of echo. Being a condenser means that it requires 48 volts for phantom power, and most of the recorders that have that are either large or expensive or both. This recorder is very affordable at around $150. Because the recorder is so small, I carry it in my gadget bag all the time. And it is always available. It can be a very big help when needed, especially like the shoot I recently did. Also, it has very long battery life, which makes it very reliable. And there is nothing worse than having to change batteries all the time or having them quit in the middle of a recording. I could have bought several small recorders on the market. Zaxcom and Electrosonics Wireless have units that have a recorder, but they are very expensive. Tascam has a recorder, the DR10X, that is very affordable, but it isn't wireless or have phantom power. Ceramonic is a relatively new brand owned by the Chinese company DSQN Investment Company Limited. They focus on making quality and affordable audio equipment for filmmakers. They started with making passive and active on-camera audio mixers in 2014. Like the Ceramonic SRAX100 and the Ceramonic A107. They now offer a full range of audio products, microphones, recorders, including unique dual wireless systems specifically aimed at small crews, shooting interviews, and films. When I picked up the Ceramonic recorder to use it, it felt very well made because it was made out of metal. It feels very substantial, but is easy to use. Just plug in your mic and you will be ready to go. I attached my microphone by plugging it into the XLR input of the recorder. You have to push it in fairly substantially until it clicks. There's a latch on the back of the recorder that allows you to remove the microphone as well. It's very secure when it's plugged in because there's a little rubber ring right here. Let's see if the unit has any batteries. You go to the bottom of the unit and you push these two little clips and the batteries come out. And yes, there's batteries in this recorder because I had put them in earlier. And then you just slide it back in and it clicks. There is a headphone jack under this little door. And then also that is where you put the micro SD card. The micro SD card can be up to 32 gigabytes in this recorder. The micro SD card is inserted 
with the unit upside down. And then you close the cover. There is a large LCD on the front of the unit which makes making adjustments very easy. Pressing the power button, it boots up very quickly, as you can see. As I have a phantom powered mic, let's turn on 48 volts. You do that by pushing the power button which takes you to menu 1. Hit the plus button and that takes you to menu 7 where it says plus 48 volts set. Then hit the record button and that takes you to where the setting is. You use the plus and minus key to get where you want. I want to go to on and then hit record and the little light on the top of the unit pops on and it tells you you're now in 48 volts and phantom power. Now let's get out of this menu by hitting power and then power. And now the recorder is ready for 48 volts and phantom power. By default, this recorder will record 48 kilohertz at 24 bit. This is very good because this is the standard of video production. Of course, you have to adjust your preamp level according to the microphone signal. You can do this by pressing the plus or minus button here on the recorder, and that will change the level. The maximum you can go is 60. Now I'm ready to record because I have everything set up. To start recording, I hit the record button once. And now we are recording. There's a little LED at the top that will show you that you are recording. Hold the button down again, and you pause the recording. Push it again, and it continues on. And I am recording right now. And then if you want to stop recording, you hit the record button and hold it. A little square will show on the display. That shows that you're no longer recording. I recorded the narrations with ease by holding the microphone close to their mouth and having them read their lines on the script. Later I checked how the recorder performed. The recording sounded clear and clean with no distortion over modulation. Then I plugged the recorder into a pristine signal to test it and check to see how it changed it in recording. With almost any modern recorder, frequency response is good and won't cause any trouble. And that certainly is the case here. Next, I took a look at the total harmonic distortion. This is how much the recorder adds harmonics to the original signal. Here is the results for a 1 kHz sinus signal. This is very good for a field recorder, as you will never hear any harmonics among a real live environment. And here are the results of all frequency ranges. You can get better results in the studio or with a feature film recorder, but a field recorder such as the VRM1, these results are just fine. We use the Ceremonic with a variety of microphones. Here is a PVI-100. That is a dynamic mic and does not require phantom power. Another dynamic mic is this Senhill reporter mic, the ENG-18RL. Again, you just plug these into the XLR port. Now, I also have some condenser mics. Of course, this Audio-Technica mic. But I also had an Audio-Technica lavalier, which I have here. This is a condenser mic, so it requires phantom power. And then I also have this Behringer testing microphone, the ECM-8000. That also requires phantom power, 
and all I had to do was plug it into the bottom of the recorder and then I was ready to go. I recommend that you actually read the manual for this recorder because it covers a lot of the options of this unit. Once I had made all my settings correct, I was ready to record. I decided to look at some of the other controls on this unit. Some are very easy to set. You can make a long press on the plus button, which will allow you to select a few of the features on screen. Long press the plus, and that takes you to the low pass filter. Push minus, and it turns it on. Push minus again, it puts it back with no low pass filter. Long press again, it takes you to the headphones. You can hit the plus to increase the volume or hit the minus to decrease the volume. Long press the plus again and now you're back at mic level. Next, I took a look at the rest of the menus which are well organized and easy to use. You press the power button once to get into the menus like we did for Phantom Power. This first menu is the file menu. This allows you to access files for playback. As you can see here, I just push the record button to get there. And now I hit the power button again and it goes back out. The plus and minus buttons move through the menus. Now let's go down to number two, the input menu. Push the record button and it takes you to the low pass cutoff. It can be switched on or off by hitting it once again. Hit the plus or minus. Hit the power button. Number three is record set. And this gives you the file limit. You hit record again and now you can see there is 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes. I'm going to set it and leave it at 30 minutes. There it is. Hit record. And now go back out. Hit the power button and that takes you back out. Now we can see that we also have sample rate. Hit record. And now you can see the sample rates. You have several choices. Sample rate of 24 kilohertz, 16 bit. 48 kilohertz, 16 bit. 24 kilohertz, 24 bit. And 48 kilohertz, 24 bit, which is the one that is starred. That means that's the default where it is set right now. It would be rare to change it to any of these other settings because they are much lower quality than the default. In fact, the top ones are good for only recording long lectures or something like that where you just need a lot of record time with not the best quality, maybe for transcription. Most of the time you wouldn't use them at all. So let's go back out of this and go to number four. Minus down and that is SD card. SD card is what you think it is. It tells you information about the card that you have in the unit right now. But you also can format the card from this menu. You hit the record button and then it'll give you the option to format it and we're going to say no. So we'll back out of that and back out of there. Now let's go to menu 5 and that is your play mode menu. Push record. In play mode the choices are single play, single cycle, order play which is one that starred, and content cycle. 
I just left it on order play, so I just hit the power button. It goes out of the play mode. Now we'll go down to six, which is system, and that's a good menu to have because it allows you to set the date and time of the recorder. It took me a little bit to learn how to adjust the date and time. To move from hours to minutes, you have to long press the minus. See, there it goes. And then you can hit the plus or minus to change your date and time. Hold the long press on it and it goes to the next one. Again, plus or minus. Then you can go to the actual year, to the month, and to the day. And then once you're done, you hit record and you're back out again. Let's go to the LCD backlight next. Just hit here and you can go down. As you can see, you have always on, always off, 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. I'm going to set it for 30 seconds. So I just hit the record button and now I hit power and that takes me out. Now we can go to the LCD contrast. And that's a value that just goes back and forth, like so. Let's take it out of there and go next to the version. And that just shows you what firmware you have in the recorder. Back out of that. And next is factory reset. If you go into here, you can say yes or no. I'm not going to reset this, so I'm going to hit no. And I'm back out again, back out again. And that is menu six. Menu seven, we have shown you before, earlier in this recording. So let's back out. My wish right now is to have this recorder have a firmware update to add dual recording. Dual recording is very handy because it gives you a protection track for your audio. One track will be minus 10 dB lower than the main audio track. And if you distort, you'll be able to use the other track. This little recorder is always ready and is in my bag. I really like the Ceramonic SRVRM1. It is a very affordable field recorder that has good sound quality and offers phantom power in an XLR audio device. It came in very handy on my shoot. So when I was done, I just pushed the power button and held it. And then it says power off. And I was done. Subscribe to Personal Views YouTube channel and you'll see more videos like this one.